I'm joined now by co-director of Positive Money, Fran Boyt. Fran, thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me on. Our pleasure. What's happening precisely with inflation and should we expect it to start falling now that the base rate is at 5%, the highest in more than a decade? It's pretty depressing, isn't it? Um, I mean, when you look at the big picture, you know, uh, this inflation is caused globally, high fossil fuel prices, high food prices, which is caused by climate change and ecological stress, and also that corporate prof profiteering. Um, and interest rate hikes are going to do nothing for any of those. So the ONS has pointed out that uh, about 75% of the three quarters of uh, the effect of the inflation we're seeing is to do with not just energy prices, but goods and services that have very high energy intensities. And we see there is more and more data on the effects of climate change on food prices uh, with extreme events such as, as droughts, etc., having a huge effect. The European Central Bank, Bank has also projected that um, rising temperatures could impact food prices by up to 3% a, uh, a year by 2035. So these are system level challenges what we're calling fossilflation and climateflation. They're not going away anytime soon, and we do need economic policy to meet the challenges that we're facing. At the same time is those hikes from uh, the Bank of England yet again today, which is going to do nothing for those and in fact just make things a lot more terrible and miserable for people up and down the country with mortgages and rates becoming more and more unaffordable, you know, the cost of living crisis deepening, um, and at the same time expanding those bank profits. Those are the only winners from today's announcement. And we saw the bank to an extent caving into pressure from the city, raising um, 0.5 rather than 0.25 um, percentage points today. Um, you know, the Bank of England should be serving the public and not the City of London. Um, but we've seen pressure not just from the city, but also from people like the Chancellor's advisors, Karen Ward, I think he works for JP Morgan. Um, so it's a pretty depressing state of affairs. Um, you know, as you've touched on, you know, the Bank of England is really actively trying to cause a recession in the UK to push people out of work. You know, they want them to stop asking for higher wages in this cost of living crisis. But as we've seen today, you know, their own report shows that's not the problem. Uh, they, they talk about basically the, the high pay in the last month has come from finance and business, the high pay sectors, and that the low pay sectors, you know, pay has basically been flat. So, you know, just to be clear, these, these rate hikes are going to boost bank profits, they're going to boost bank pay. So, you know, there may be a wage price spiral, but it's only between the bank and the bankers uh, everyone else kind of continuing to suffer. So, you know, this approach is about making workers poorer and banks richer. Yeah, I'll just pull up something you said there, which is super interesting. So many great points. I love this idea of fossilflation. But the idea that the, the people getting the biggest pay rises are bankers and sort of fundamentally very wealthy people in financial services. They're also joined by working class, you know, voters, workers, uh, who, who tend not to have a university degree. So in jobs like bartending, uh, we've obviously seen HGV drivers, welders, uh, fruit pickers. Since Brexit, we've obviously seen a constraint of labour supply, fewer people going into these jobs, and obviously then workers in these jobs can, can ask for more money. And that's an outgrowth of Brexit. So you've got really bankers doing well out of this, and because of Brexit, certain people being able to ask for higher wages. These are two things that apparently Rishi Sunak is all for. You're obviously pessimistic about what this will do to um, address the situation of inflation, by which I mean rate rises. I would have thought it's just their sort of ideological safe space. You're saying it's also as a result of sort of lobbying by the city. So how high do you expect interest rates to go before they make the decision, actually, this isn't working and the political overhead is too high? I mean, you know, I think it's gone a lot further than many forecasters already thought. Um, so now people are adjusting to saying maybe 6% in middle of next year could be when it peaks. But really, I mean, it seems like the Bank of England is, you know, seems very happy to, to kind of continue down this path. The UK has a really weak economy. As we know, there's a lot of debt. And, and you know, we've heard, um, you know, what's going to happen with mortgages uh, in terms of heaping huge amounts more costs on, on households. So this, this pushes us into dangerous territory, into kind of financial instability territory um, with these hikes, just putting that pressure on private debt. Uh, and it's looking ever more dangerous. So, you know, I guess our 
are, um, you know, we don't know how far it, it could go to potentially more financial instability, but the kind of best hope is that there is a change in government, I guess, at the end of next year, and there's some supportive packages for households. You talked a lot about core inflation being higher in, say, the UK in the U than the US. Um, that's partly because we've seen that the Inflation Reduction Act happening in the US, which has gone some way to ease some of those pressures when we have still seen, you know, the, the Fed continuing to hike rates. Um, but I guess, you know, for all of the US as well as the UK, what we need to see more of is is macroeconomic policy coordination that can, you know, not kind of think we can address these in silos or pull in different directions. Um, so those short term measures like public sector pay rises, well taxes, taxes on on not just oil and gas, but also banks and also potentially things like price controls. And then we need a longer term strategy for the fossil inflation, the climate inflation in terms of getting our economies off fossil fuels and also, you know, taking us towards some kind of just green transition, if that's possible. Those are the sensible policies. I, I, I'm not expecting them any time over the next 12 months, but it does feel like there's a growing division between the Bank of England and the government on this. And, you know, people like Jacob Rees-Mogg, real monetarists, would probably be thinking, Mr. Bailey, if you don't do what we're saying, we will reconsider formal Bank of England independence. Where do you think this ends up? Because it may be a, a, a situation saying, January, February next year, massive political discontent, interest rates, like you said, 6% plus, it's not working. Um, and I wonder if at that point, you know, a section of the Tory party will say, well, look, we need to sack Bailey, we need to have political oversight of interest rates again. What do you think of that quickly? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, conservative stories from all wings of the party will see this absolute hike in mortgage, mortgage rates and, and middle classes that may previously voted Conservative, you know, moving towards not voting for them. And, and as we move, you know, the, into less than a year out from a general election, it can just be like a slow, painful car crash. And so, of course, um, you know, Sunak doesn't want to see rates go higher. Most Conservatives will kind of realise more and more that this is is kind of going to boot them out of government um, is going to be a big factor in that. Um, you know, they don't have any answers. They don't have any ideas for, for what a kind of economic strategy could look like that could support households. You know, they seem to have dismissed the idea of a windfall tax, even though you know, Margaret Thatcher did do it. It was quite a small one, but in the last time interest rates were hiked in the early 80s. Um, and so, you know, they don't really have an economic plan. Um, and so, you know, we saw um, what happened with Liz Truss when they she was pulling a different direction from Bank of England. Obviously, eventually she got booted out. Well, this time it might be uh, a general election. But I think in terms of independence, you know, this comes up a lot. And what we we often say at Positive Money is like it's operational independence. But remember, the mandate is set by the uh, the government by the chancellor and as i said before what we really need to tackle some of these longer term system level challenges is that coordinated macroeconomic policy between monetary between fiscal between industrial um so yeah i'm sure we'll hear some some conservatives you know trying to kick the bank of england but but they probably won't be getting at the real challenges we face when it comes to economic policy <laughs> 